Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I'm going to give you guys a little um, tell all about me, a little interview about me. Um, it's a bit different, I'm not really with someone today, no one's interviewing me, but I'm just going to go through some of the questions that I've been asking other people and, and I've included others that are more personal for me, just to give you an idea of kind of, um, you know, my head and, and, you know, all the different things that I, um, you know, went through and have been going through. So yeah. So just a basic overview of me. Um, 19 years old. Uh, live in Sydney. I uh, you know play footy, play basketball, love listening to music, um, and yeah, love hanging out with some friends. I got got a great support network around me of friends and family, and yeah, um, things at the moment are okay. Um, I would probably wouldn't say okay, probably probably better than okay. I will I will I will say that it's um it's obviously rocky because of this COVID stuff. But man, I'm in such a better place now than I was than I've ever been, and I just have um, more clarity and and better understanding of myself. Like truly, like I I really understand myself better. What I like to do, what what helps me, what doesn't help me, and um, yeah, so things are pretty good. So going to the issues, um, so to start off with mainly the anxiety, this was, um, you know, I guess undiagnosed, if you will, um, but it's something I've had for a long time, like I can't exactly pinpoint the day or when, but it was, it's just something that I've always had and it's always kind of shook me to my core and it's, it's, I say it in my blog, it's helped make and break me at the same time because it's, it can help you, it can spur you on to do different things, but it also, for me, it was like a constricting anxiety. It was just, you know, you know, it's really horrible and I'm not fully over it, um, but I know how to, I guess, manage it now and I'll, I'll, I'll get into that later in the video. Um, you know, talking to Peter, my hypnotherapist, who I'll definitely recommend to anyone out there. He was absolutely incredible for me. He recognized that as running patterns. He said, I was running patterns of anxiety, and this led to me running patterns of depression. And these patterns were me, you know, not sleeping well, not eating well, um, not seeing friends enough, you know, working too much. Um, I think listening to not great music, you know, staying inside all day when I didn't have to go to work or I didn't have any other obligations. Really, it was it was a really um, it was more about my lifestyle behavior and what I was actually doing, which was so detrimental. And um, that's why I see it as running patterns. I definitely agree with Peter, my hypnotherapist, who identified them. Um, I guess how I would describe it would be just having someone in the back of my head like controlling what I do um, and it was just the main thing that they made me do was it made me do nothing like I would have many things on my mind and this little thing in the back of my head kind of like devil on my shoulder type of thing just wouldn't let me do anything wouldn't wouldn't would stop me from going outside and trying different things and and trying to solve any of the issues that I had um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's maybe, that's mainly why, that's mainly how I'd describe it. It was just really constricting and, and scary, definitely scary at some points. I definitely started noticing these struggles around age 13. I think as I started high school and different things kind of, you know, uh, you know, built together. Um, you know, I talk about this a lot in my blog as well. Um, but yeah, I, I identified it around, you know, age 13 and the depression kind of sunk in around like age of 17 and 18 and even 19 as well. Um, especially where that's, you know, where it got to its worst and my darkest moments kind of happened there. When these first surfaced, I, I didn't really tell anyone for... I don't, I don't believe I told anyone for some time. I just kind of thought it, thought about it as this is just me, this is just something I've got to deal with and, um, you know, something I've just got to deal with on my own. 
um, <laughs> stupid now, but you know, I, I just never really told people, but I eventually did tell my parents about some anxiety I was having with um, like footy and, and like relationships and stuff like that. And I did go to see a therapist and yeah. One thing I'll say about my issues and definitely the anxiety is that it made me very unpredictable. Um, I would have a mask up to show that I was great and everything and then at home I would just be not that and very, a lot of the times I would, I'd cry myself to sleep and it was horrible. Like I, I, my family was literally on the other side of the wall but I just didn't, um, I didn't say anything and I, I never told anyone about it, I don't know why. But yeah, the main thing was I was very unpredictable. Um, with this group of people, I was, you know, happy, vibrant, ecstatic. And then another group of people, I was very shy and to myself. I think, I think it was um, with, you know, work and, and my friends were there. I was very out there, very, you know, ecstatic, like I said, and very, very happy. And then when it came to other things like... I think, I think AFL, um, going into like a senior club, I was very, very shy around like the older blokes on the team. Um, obviously nothing wrong with them. It was just, I was just living kind of two lives. You know, I was, I was, I was happy this moment and I was shy the next and it was very confusing living that way. I often, um, when things kind of didn't go my way throughout this kind of this th age 13 to age 19, I would often just make up things in my head. I would um, pretend that different things happened just so that I wouldn't hurt myself. And now I understand that my mind was doing that because it's trying to keep me safe. Like for instance, like I had a fallout with a, you know, with a relationship and I just kind of told myself that I just, bent the story in my head so that it wasn't that way, that I didn't get, you know, treated badly and I didn't get, um, you know, done poorly, you know what I mean? Like I, I really just pretended that everything was fine and I'd make up these stories. I kind of had this, this, this other personality in my head that was, you know, perfect the perfect person like I always had this perfect person in, in my head thinking that I was them or thinking and, and bending everything every story every every event that happened in my life I would bend to the positive so I could live as this person I could live as this personality um, and yeah that was very very just just horrible I think so that's the main word I'd say. I think I tend to do that um, sometimes now, but I don't do it as much as I as I used to. Um, you know, pretending I'm living another life when I'm not. I'm becoming more central to the moment and and present. Um, but yeah, that's something that I think a lot of people do. They're ashamed of something or they don't like how different events kind of panned out. So they make up things in their head to, to make up for that. Now th these patterns that I kind of talked about before, it was, you know, poor sleep, bad food. Um, you know, it was a regular consumption as well. Like I'd, ha I'd eat and then 10 hours later I'd eat. Um, and it was, it was normally on un unhealthy food as well. Um, you know, I was working long hours, not seeing friends, um, irregular periods of no exercise and and I think the main thing with these patterns that I was running was just inconsistency. I was, I couldn't really get a schedule in hand and I couldn't find any sort of ground for me to, to just start being okay or start to start, to start running good patterns. I couldn't find that, that ground. Um, so with social media, it definitely has had a negative experience on me. I often would browse and look at other people's lives and kind of it would make me feel like shit because I wasn't living the greatest life. Um, social media is this fake world where people can, can
could show off and do all these things, but it was just really detrimental to me. I was damaging. I would compare myself to other people, which was really stupid. You should never do that. Um, everyone comes from different beginnings and everyone has a different ending. You know, we're not all competing against each other, but I was just had this comparisons that I was making to other people. Um, and I think it's also just like seeing people uh, who had a partner and I was single, seeing people who were in their career and doing what they wanted to do and I really wasn't in where I wanted to do. I was just working as much as I could because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, that was, that was not good at all. Um, I've learned to, to shut it off um, as much as I can. I definitely was on it for hours and hours during this time. I'm still on it, I guess, but you know, I'm not as, I guess, addicted as I was before. Um, so when I eventually went to therapy, um, it was, it was great because I had a, I had someone who just simplified the different issues that I had. Um, I'll link him in, in the description. Um, Joel, he was, he was, he was really good. He's part of like this Endeavor Wellness. Um, yeah, he, he was really good. He just, it was the only problem I had with therapy wasn't with him or anything that he was doing. It was just the fact that I would see him and everything would be good after that day because I'd kind of have this pressure that was built up, it would go away, it would dissipate. Um, but the next couple of days after that, I just kind of fell back into the same way that I was before and I didn't, I couldn't um, hold on to the moment that I had after meeting with Joel. Um, so yeah, I think with therapy is great. I think it should be something you do multiple times a week. And also there should be some form of active therapy and that's where um, Peter came in to help me start actually doing something and start um, working for the life that I, I want and the life that I love. Um, so yeah, definitely therapy is great. I definitely recommend it. Um, I just feel like it's so good to get your thoughts out there. It's also great to start, you know, making some action towards that. So lowest point I reached was I believe it was 2019 October 26th I describe it in my blog as kind of a night where I you know attempted an impromptu suicide um, yeah so that was definitely the scariest time um, everything you know as I kind of talked about I'll briefly go into it but Everything was great leading up to this night. I'd been running great patterns. Um, I had met a girl and we'd started kind of, you know, working things out and it was, I was really having a good time. We were out clubbing. Um, yeah, so I was at one of these local clubs in Cronulla and I, um, something hit me and I believe it was a panic, att panic attack. I still don't know, but something hit me and it, forced me out of my body. So something else was controlling me, but I was seeing everything that was happening. I went home and I went into our like cabinet and I just, I took as many like pills as I could. I just, I didn't know if these were gonna actually kill me, but at the time I wanted them to. And I know that's a horrible thing to, to think, but you gotta understand that in this moment, I couldn't understand anything. I I couldn't control anything. My my this little thing in the back of my head had kind of grown to the point where it had complete control over my body. So I took these, I guess, in the hopes that I, they would work and that um, that you know it would kind of end all the stuff that was going on because I was just crying in tears. I was just miserable in that moment. It was, it was horrible. I don't wish that on anyone. Um, so yeah, and then I eventually, something came to my senses and I you know, forced myself to vomit them out. And yeah, and I, the day after I 
had work, worked at a pub, and I was just walking around doing my thing, and one of my managers kind of noticed that I was like kind of shaking and and just not myself. Um, even before the shift, I was sitting in the staff room and I had my head like that, and everyone just thought I was like hungover. <laughs> but really, I was so just in shock and. I don't, I can't even explain it. It was just such a horrible feeling, the aftermath. And one of my managers caught up to me and saw me and I kind of broke down in like the middle of the pub, which was sick, I was mad. Um, but yeah, we talked it out and I told him what happened. I felt better, felt good to do. I just, you know, and I didn't want to go home because I don't believe anyone's home at that time. Um, but yeah, it was, the aftermath was, probably worse but it, it it made me realize it made me realize that it's not worth it you know I I went and talked to my friend about it I think that same day and he's like my best friend and I told him about what I'd done or what what happened and he broke down like crying and um, yeah that was I did not feel good, you know, he's, um, he helped me so much kind of leading up to that and then it, I, I, it was just a shock to him, he was, again, he was just in tears and it was, yeah, um, so I guess in a way I kind of got to see my life if it had ended, which is something I think a lot of people are curious about. But it's not as good as you think. Um, talking to my best mate and talking to the people at work and then talking to my family about it, you know, they were so deeply affected and yeah, so um, the aftermath was, was horrible and it made me realize that I, I do belong here and that I'm not I'm not crazy but that I need to start actually um, doing active therapy and and making a difference in my own life so moving into some advice some revelations and some reflection um, some therapeutic activities there's a whole lot that I've found um, some that I were doing before everything kind of snapped and some that I've found now which are just incredible. Um, you know, AFL and footy, that, that's been a part of my life for 15, 16 years. It's been there forever and I am so grateful to have that there because it's taught me so much and it's brought me so many friends and so many good experiences. Um, and it's just something where I can focus my like competitive energy as well is um, basketball as well. I can you know focus and have fun there. Huge basketball fan. Um, I think social time with friends being huge. Just going out for coffee with a friend as much as we can. You, when you finish school, your schedules are completely different. Other people, you're. It's so hard to to kind of link up with people. So taking the taking the time and the effort to to organize. A, organize a you know coffee or going out or some whatever it may be is huge and trust me you have more time than you think um, I was working you know 50 60 hours a week at one point but I definitely did have time for me to actually start um, seeing some friends so social time has been huge um, going for walks has been absolutely huge I, I do morning walks I do night walks um, I go by myself or I take my dog, they're absolutely huge. Um, swimming, I don't do that as frequently, but I still definitely enjoy it, you know. Um, I'm kind of in my own zone as well, which is great about all these therapeutic activities. You get in your own zone, you get away from all these issues. All you're doing is focusing on something that is bigger than the problems. Um, breathing techniques have been huge. Um, I've definitely caught myself in a stressful situation or worrying intensely about something and I've just been breathing like very rapidly. Um, with the breathing techniques that I've been working on, it's taught me to slow my breathing and have longer breaths 
and to do these kind of breathing techniques very frequently. I, I, I do them around you know a couple times a day, and it takes like five minutes really to do. Um, and it really just kind of kickstarts me and gets and keeps me going. Um, you know, you have these little mountains um, across your day, and if you're able to slow down and start breathing and start thinking rationally, you can get over them and start getting these wins for the day. And um, you really you start to realize how much power is in your hands with your mental health. Now also, yoga. I've been doing yoga with my mum, which is amazing because. There's no ego with yoga, it's, it's just feels so good after it. Um, you know, I feel like it unlocks so much energy in me and so, and so much potential for productivity. Um, you know, writing things down has been great. Um, I have a little food for thought talking about some stuff I wrote in my little booklet. Um, and I basically just talk about my feelings and and I just go into depth about how I'm feeling and I give a date because I, I want to know how I'm feeling those years back so I can look at it now and be like, man, I've, I've progressed. I've gotten so much better than I was two, three years ago or, or one year ago or a couple of months ago, whatever it may be. So writing things down has been huge. That's part of the expression. Um, additionally, music has, has been huge, not only listening to it, but also creating some. Um, it's kind of really easy nowadays, even if you don't know any instruments or don't know music at all. I don't, I don't know that, that at all, but I think just going to YouTube and looking up like instrumentals and beats and that and just kind of immersing yourself in that sound and start creating something that is unique to you. Um, yeah, creating music, I've been doing it for like four years. I've never really showed anyone kind of just f f some insecurities, but uh, recently I've started to get equipment to start recording and I'm really excited to do that because this stuff is so, I hold it very close to me and it's, it's expressing my feelings, my, I guess my pain and my, also my success, um, dealing with my mental health and dealing with the relationships. It's just a great place for me to express myself for me and for me to be myself. Um, and yes, yeah, so music is absolutely huge. The main thing with these things is they create an escape um, and they allow me to, you know, have future thinking, if you will, and not thinking about the past and worrying, but thinking about, the, they allow me to, you know, future think um, in a way that is positive and not negative. You know, I'm thinking in the future not to worry, but I'm thinking in the future in excitement and in curiosity and you know, a, I've got an eager sense about me. So yeah, like these things create an escape and allow me to have some clarity towards what I want to do in my life and, you know, all these different things. So absolutely huge. And a, a big thing with these therapeutic activities is that Peter, my hypnotherapist, kind of wrote a lot of things down, what I like to do, what I don't like to do. And he, you know, put me on a path that said, hey, you're gonna start working for yourself. And that's what these activities are. They're working for me. It's not selfish. It's it's really about self-care. Um, and so, yeah, these activities being huge and I have so many of them that I can just pick a couple out on any day and just, you know, uh, have fun and, and just be myself. Best and worst advice, I think, there's a, there's a lot that you hear and that you see on social media and that people tell you. I think some really good advice being for me to just take my time and live day by day. There's a reason why people say those things. There's a reason why they have a cliche aura surrounding them because they actually work. I've learned once I start taking things day by day, my problems become way smaller than they seem. Um, it's obviously easier said than done, but it, it's so great to to wake up and have a couple of things to do on that day. You get your little wins done, as, as you will. Um, um, yeah, so I think taking day by day is absolutely huge. Um, learning not to listen to people who don't matter. And it's hard to know which who don't matter and 
who do. If they're not gonna be at your wedding, they're not gonna be at your funeral, and they're not gonna be at all these important events in your life, I feel like they don't really matter. Um, and that's a big thing for me with this project and also with, with also music is that expressing myself always, I always think about what other people will think in a negative way. But I have to stop and think, the only, the only person that has to be happy with what I do is me. Um, you know, it's, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the main one for best advice. For worst advice, I'd say the stereotypical ones, which is just man up, um, you know, just, just do it, <laughs> um, which I don't really know how to do it. If you just say, just do it. Um, also just like, to stop overthinking, people say, you know, um, you know, if I could stop overthinking, I would have done that years ago. But I, yeah, you, know, you so don't. The man up thing that that people say for men is, is really hurtful when there are so many um, boys that are turning into men who are trying to find their way in the world, and if you just put them in a box that they have to be tough and and you know, rough and, and don't let anything get into them, it forces them to act out a certain way that isn't them. And when you're not being yourself, you're just not living a good life at all. The main false stigmas I've heard is like, people with going through mental illness stuff, um, is that, you know, there's something wrong with them that they can't fix. You know, they're always gonna have it. Um, it is true to a point, but I do believe there's so much power in our hands to actually make a difference for ourselves. Um, also, just the whole, you know, no diagnosis thing, just because you're not diagnosed doesn't mean you're not running patterns of anxiety or depression. I think everyone does. Um, and so whether you're diagnosed with it, it doesn't um, define you. It also doesn't um, make you less important than anyone else. Everyone is as important as each other when it comes to um, your own mental journey um, and starting to mature and grow as a person. Everyone's, everyone's important in that same sense. So I talked to Cody in my first interview, she said recovery is not linear and I think that's great because people think that recovery from these different things and growth is something that is short and can be done in a couple of months or a year or a couple of years. This stuff can take years and I've seen a lot of people talk about it and then they've been dealing with it for a long time. Especially myself, I know that I've gotten better definitely recently and I've continued to grow as a person, but I know that anxiety is something gonna be with that's gonna be with me for a long time. How I manage it is how I you know how I grow and how I mature. Yeah, also the whole running patterns thing I wanna to touch on as well. Say if you're going through um, feelings of depression, I don't think that defines you as you're depressed and that's all you're going to be or that's that's just you, you're just this person who's depressed. I think it's just something that is indicative of how you treat yourself and also how others treat you, how the world responds to you, there's something that you can't control but when it comes down to it there's so many things you can control and that, that can help define whether you are running patterns of, of depression or also you're just living this sad life. And I, I, I truly urge people to start understanding what patterns they're running, what behaviors they are running in their lives. Um, not just with anxiety and depression, it could be with addiction, it could be with, other, you know, so many other things. Um, it could be with, you know, eating disorders. Understand these, these that what, what patterns are you actually running in your life? Are these helpful for you? Do you think these are helpful? Ask for advice on these things. Because the behaviors that you um, engage in, the patterns that you run can truly make or break you. Um, again, the world can hurt you in different ways that you can't control. Um, you know, it's just about how you respond to that. And I've found that running healthy um, patterns and activities is absolutely huge. It's the number one thing for people going through any mental health um, illnesses. A really good piece of advice that I just love is just 
to say fuck it, you know? If you're wanting to do something, and I'm not saying just do it, I'm just saying start trying because I know for me, I've been wanting to do music for a long time, I've been wanting to do this project for a couple of years, and I just, I don't know how people are going to receive it, I don't know if I should do it this way or this way, just start whatever way you feels okay, or just start in a way. Um, the way I started this, I've completely changed it over the past year, because different things come up and I remind myself, okay, that's good, that's not good. I want it to be looking like this and that. It's all about trial and error. People who are musicians, they rarely, you know, release the perfect song on the first, um, the first trial or the first, you know, first album, whatever it may be. Stuff just takes time and um, embrace that failure as something you can be like, sweet, you know, now I know how to do this. Now I know I shouldn't do that or that I'm not good at that. I can work on that. So I just say, fuck it sometimes. Um, or for the PG viewers, screw it. Um, so yeah, I think that that's a big thing for me to understand when I'm getting insecure about different things. Just try one way. Try one way of approaching something. At least you'll know how it goes, you know, once you kind of go through with it. Um, and I do want people to message me about this if you're worrying about different things, because it's, it's hard for me to explain without giving an example in every way. Um, so do definitely message me about this one because I do want to inspire people to, to say fuck it and start doing things and start, you know, living, working for a life that they want to live. Um, and how do you just say fuck it? How do you just say screw it? How do you just do things? Um, it's all about um, just starting. You don't have to start um, in an amazing, incredible way. Um, I think once you get one thing done, it will motivate you to do the next thing. So anyway, you message me about this specific thing as well because I do want to give people advice about that. Um, and yeah, what I know I can do better throughout this whole thing is is I think one thing is to breathe, another thing is to take things day by day, another thing is just to be more consistent, um, talk about these, I talk about these therapy activities that I've been doing, it's just to be more consistent with them because I know how much they help me. Um, so yeah, just I think for me, one day at a time and one task at a time. I wake up, I want to do one thing that is therapeutic for me to get me going with the day. So I think that's the main thing for me, just learning, working to be consistent, um, learning to work for myself first. Um, that is absolutely huge. Yes, I'm doing this project and, I'm, and you know, it's, it's about helping other people. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, my mental health is more important than any you know, business venture or just passion venture um, that this is, you know, because it's not really a business thing, it's more of just a passion thing. My mental health is more important, I guess, than working for something else. Um, I need to understand that and it's not selfish, I, it's, again, it's just self-care. Something I'd tell my younger self going through all of this is to hold on, <laughs> just hold on and um, to trust in the future that it's going to be better than the past. It's hard to do that, um, but you just gotta trust. Like, you really just gotta affirm yourself. That's a big thing. I would actually tell myself to start doing positive affirmations because I've been doing them recently. They've been great. So I definitely tell myself to start doing them. I'd also tell myself to start slowing down things and not have and starting to work for rational thoughts and um, getting these irrational thoughts out of here a good thing I would tell myself is to with these thoughts uh, work out if they're rational or irrational do they mean something for the next one to five years are they really as important am I, as I'm making them out to be and then you kind of get an idea of what really matters Something I'm always grateful for is my support network. I have an incredible support network of friends and family 
who, oh, <laughs> they have just been huge in helping me work for something better and to start living again instead of just killing myself every single day. Um, I think, yeah, I'm always grateful for my support network. I'm, I have a great group of friends who, who some may not understand what I'm going through, but they understand that I'm predictable and they understand that, you know, I'll be like this one day and I might be like this the next. Um, so yeah, shout out, shout out to the friends, shout out to my family. You guys are absolutely incredible. The best advice from myself I, is two, two things. Um, one is there is light at the end of the darkness. You gotta believe that even if you can't see it, but it is there. Um, you know, with finding this light um, out of the darkness, it, it came from me trying something new. It came from me taking the advice from other people. It came to me, came from me being vulnerable and understanding of the issues that I was going through. Um, again, again, it came from me caring for myself first. Um, and then the second one is to swim and not, I don't mean the swimming one, even though it's good for you, I mean to start swimming in the issues instead of drowning in them. Where when the different waves crash over you, you can just sit there and do nothing and let the water just consume you and let the problems just consume you. Once you start swimming, um, you, you'll start to realize that, again, there's, there's something better than that was behind you. There's something, there's, there's light you know, in front of you that you can start swimming for, start working for. Um, and how, how do you swim? Like I said before, it's about working for activities that you like to do. Is, is what, what do you hold really um, central and important to you? That's, that's how you swim. Um, and you have questions of, oh, I don't know if I'm good at this. I know, you know, I know what I'm gonna do. I don't know how I'm gonna do any of this. You know, what if I get tired? What if I can't swim? You know what I mean? You can't have everything figured out at 19 or 20, 25. You really, you really can't. Big thing with swimming is focusing on other things that aren't your issues. That's how you start um, swimming. That's how you start working at a pace that you can grow and mature in. Um, it's, it's absolutely huge. I, I hold that, that idea with me a lot to swim and not drown. As you know, I got that from Mac Miller's swimming album. My main advice for people out there is to start swimming because if you don't swim, you're just gonna drown. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate um, people watching these things, um, you know, I, I open up a lot about myself with this whole project, especially with this, and so I really appreciate you guys watching this. Um, I hope you found something from this. Feel free to message me about anything. Um, I'm here to talk about anything, really. Um, you know, let's help each other. You know, let's use our stories and let's start working for a better life together. Yeah, I hope you found something good from this, and I hope you have a good day.